Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. This episode is Lesson 43 of our look at the book of 1 Corinthians. In the last episode, we covered 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. In this episode, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 15, verses 12 through 19, and the episode will be titled, The Importance of the Resurrection. Let's begin by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 12. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is, your, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if it be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and you, and you are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Continuing what he started in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 11, Paul here is discussing the essential connection between Christ's resurrection and the resurrection of the dead in general. In verse 12, he begins by saying that the resurrection of Christ was the vital truth in their faith. Such is the same today. We cannot be a follower of Christ and not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's the same reasons that Paul lays out for the Corinthians as the reason for us as to why we need to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ in order to be Christians. He, Paul says that it had been preached and believed by all Christians. That's why it was vital truth. It was the foundation of their faith. It's the very bedrock of our faith that we need to add to, as 1 Peter 1 verse 3 and so on goes uh, and tells us to do. It starts with the belief in the resurrection of the dead. But some in Corinth were teaching that the dead don't rise. And Paul says if Christ were raised... How can it be impossible for a resurrection? So in other words, the Corinthians may have believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but they were teaching that they can't be raised from the dead, that it's impossible for, they to, for them to be raised from the dead. And Paul is saying, well, if Christ be raised, why is it impossible that you think that you can be raised? And then perhaps there were some teaching that Christ wasn't raised, and Paul says, though, that you can't be a Christian and think that. In verses 13 to 19, he flips the argument. He states, if there is no resurrection, then Christ is not raised. He says, well, if there's no general resurrection, you can't have it both ways. You cannot believe that Christ is, is raised from the dead. If there's no general resurrection, Christ is not raised. Christ's resurrection and the idea of a general resurrection stand or fall together. If Christ is raised, then it is possible for a general resurrection. The resurrection of the dead is promised in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. It is taught by Paul and the apostles. But if there is no general resurrection, then Christ is not raised. He is still dead. But he also comes along and says, if you believe that, there are many consequences of a resurrection not being possible. The consequences are the preaching of the gospel was in vain. The preaching that Jesus said go and do in Mark 16 verses 15 and 16 is in vain if the dead rise not. Their faith was in vain because they had a hope. Our faith rests in hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for in Hebrews 11 verse 1. If there's no hope, their faith really is in vain. Paul and other teachers, moreover, would be liars because they taught that Christ was risen from the dead. But if Christ isn't risen from the dead, if it's impossible for Christ to be raised from the dead, then they are liars. The main point, though, is if there is no resurrection of the dead, Christ is still dead. And he is not the Messiah because the prophets spoke that he would not remain dead. Psalm 16, verses 8 to 10. And even more so, if Christ is dead, they are still in their sins. Therefore, 
there is nothing that has changed by being a Christian. When we become a Christian, we are raised out of the waters of baptism to walk in newness of life. But that is following Jesus being, being dead and buried and rising again. Our sins are not forgiven if Jesus Christ only died and didn't rise again. It, it all stands or falls together. And then he says, those who have died in Christ have also perished. Paul in 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18, he writes the Thessalonians to give comfort for them not to think that the dead are somehow not going to be raised and go to heaven. He's saying the dead are dead, but they are going to be raised in a new body in that last day. They're going to go to heaven too. This idea that there is that it is impossible for the dead to be raised is one that is a false doctrine. It has many consequences. Paul is stating here, you need to believe in a general resurrection if you believe that Christ was raised from the dead. If God is not powerful enough to raise Christ, his only son, from the dead, he is not powerful enough to raise us. But if he is powerful enough to raise Christ from the dead, he is powerful enough to raise us from the dead. That's Paul's message here in verses 12 through 19. But Paul is going to continue on talking about this in the next uh, sections. In the next episode, we're going to cover 1 Corinthians 15 verses 20 through 28, where Paul talks about the joyful results of Christ's resurrection in contrast to the consequences of disbelief. We can have confidence that Christ rose from the dead because of what people saw after the resurrection. But it is also nice that Christ or that Paul here tells us about the joyful results of that. What the meaning of Christ's resurrection should be for us. And I hope you'll join us in that episode. But perhaps you're listening and you're not a Christian. The brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you could hear the word of God, believe it, and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at Toronto East and Church of Christ at gmail.com. On behalf of the East End Church of Christ in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. For free online Bible-based material or to get directions to our meeting place, you can visit our website at www.eastendchurch.org. While there, you'll also find links to more of our podcasts as well as links to the live broadcasts of our services. Should you have any questions about this or any of the other podcasts you may have listened to, you may leave a comment below or email us at torontoeastendchurchofchrist at gmail.com. Please join me, the Lord willing, again in the next episode when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.